Ambassador Haley, thanks so much for joining us. Last year's G20 statement, as you know, explicitly condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine, though, of course, Russia did not sign off on that part of the statement. This year, the final statement stopped short of any direct condemnation of the invasion. What is your reaction? What do you think is more important, unanimity or an explicit condemnation? It was a win for Russia and China. They're celebrating today. I mean, what we should have had was Biden should have really pushed hard to acknowledge what he acknowledged a year ago, that Russia invaded a pro-American, freedom-loving country. And that's a fact. And to deny a fact a year later is giving a win to Russia and China is gloating because they're looking at Taiwan as this is happening. And it's a shame. Some House Republicans, as you know, are fighting to strip $24 billion in aid to Ukraine out of the upcoming government spending bill. Do you think that would be a mistake? I think that you have to look at the fact that three and a half percent has been spent um, from our defense budget towards Ukraine. That's just 3.5%. That percentage of GDP, 11 European countries have spent more than us. We know that Russia has said once they take Ukraine, Poland and the Baltics are next, and then you're looking at a full on war. What we're trying to do is prevent war. That's a pretty good return on investment to prevent war. So I think that we need to continue giving them equipment and ammunition with our allies to win. I don't think we need to give them straight up cash. I don't think we need to put troops on the ground but we need to finish this because it, we have to always remember a win for Russia is a win for China. They've made that very clear. And right now, China is our number one national security threat. So House Republicans should keep that Ukraine spending in the spending bill and should not separate it and should support it. The Republicans and Democrats should not pull in Afghanistan. Don't go pulling out now. We, Putin is at rock bottom. We know that because he's getting drones from Iran and missiles from North Korea. We know that because they've raised the draft age in Russia to 65. Finish this. Biden has missed multiple opportunities to finish this. We need to make sure that we end this war quickly, that we finish it, but we do it the right way. We don't want a further war, and the only way we can do that is to have Ukraine win. And there's no one that wants the Ukrainians to win more than the Taiwanese, because they know that if Ukraine wins, China will stay away from Taiwan. And so, yes, I think Republicans and Democrats need to keep their eye on the ball. And that is, let's finish this mission in Ukraine, and then we will handle Russia and China by just doing that. Your fellow candidates, uh, Chris Christie and Mike Pence, have traveled to Ukraine this year. Are you planning on traveling to Ukraine? I plan on traveling to Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada, and, and the rest of the country. Um, I don't have time to go to another country right now. I'm trying to earn the support of many Americans. Especially United Nations Commission looking into human rights violations in Ukraine recently said that it had, quote, not reached a conclusion whether there's genocide in Ukraine. You were the UN ambassador. Um, is that finding acceptable to you? It, do you think Russia is committing genocide in Ukraine? Well, first of all, it's hard to believe anything the U.N. says. It's a bit political. It's usually China biased. Um, and it's also Russian um, intruding into whatever they put out there. I think that what you have is, you know, when I was at the United Nations, we had no better friend than Ukraine. They voted with us on everything. They were supportive of everything that we did and they're pro-american and i think what we know is that they're a democracy and the reason that they are so careful in this war is they're trying to protect people and trying to prevent ukrainians from dying i think if there's any bullseye you need to be looking at russia they're the ones that have, inv have invaded they're the ones that are targeting schools they're the ones that continue to have death that they don't care about and i think that's the one we really need to be talking about so i don't take any u.n report too seriously on the subject of China. Uh, the Biden administration, as you know, recently sent four top officials to China to try to stabilize relations. Uh, you have said the Biden administration has the wrong approach because they're looking for win-win cooperation with China. You say, quote, they don't see us as a competitor. They see us as an enemy, unquote. Do you view China as an enemy? As an enemy. And what's disappointing about what Biden has done is here you have China has bought up 400,000 acres of U.S. soil, most recently near Grand Forks Air Force Base. They bought our largest pork producer in the country. They continue to steal $600 billion of intellectual property. They're sending millions of dollars to our universities and stealing our research and spreading propaganda. 90% of our law enforcement drones are Chinese. So while Americans freaked out over the Chinese spy balloon, just imagine what's happening with all these mini spy balloons. They have killed 
killed more Americans than the Iraq, Iran, uh, the Iraq, Afghanistan, and Vietnam wars combined with their sending fentanyl over. I mean, how much more has to happen for Biden to realize you don't send cabinet members over to China to appease them? You start getting serious with China and say, we're not going to put up with it. They keep sending different cabinet officials over, Jake, and it's embarrassing. You sent Ramondo right after she got hacked. Her emails got hacked by the Chinese. You sent all of these cabinet officials over after a Chinese spy balloon went over our country. They are putting a Chinese spy base up in on Cuba off the coast of Florida. And don't wait for the fact that they are going to be sending Chinese military troops there. What are we doing appeasing China instead? We should say you're not buying any more U.S. soil and we're going to take back what you've already bought. We're going to go and make sure that we don't have Chinese infiltration in our universities because our universities are going to have to pick between Chinese money or American money. We're going to end all normal trade relations with China until they stop killing Americans with, fe with fentanyl. And then we're going to build up our military because China now has the strongest naval fleet in the world. They are developing hypersonic, artificial intelligence, cyber, space. Neurostrike weapons, mm -hmm. which will, they're the biggest developer, which actually affects military commanders thinking and populations of, of um, people. We need to make sure that we're serious about China and they know that we're serious about them, not going and being nice to them and thinking that they're going to change. Uh, on the subject of fentanyl, I just want to uh, take a diversion for one quick second, because I've heard some of your colleagues bring up an interesting subject, which is, you're right, fentanyl is, uh, it's obscene and horrific what's going on in terms of uh, Americans being killed by this, this fentanyl crisis. Uh, Americans, uh, kids, who might take a, a, an herbal supplement that, that is not illegal and it has fentanyl in it and they die. Um, a, a friend of mine, his, his nephew died that way. I've heard some of your colleagues talk about treating the, the drug dealers in Mexico as if they are a, a terrorist cell and having the military, in cooperation with the Mexican government, obviously, treat those Mexican drug dealers as a terrorist cell. What do you think of something like that? Well, first of all, I think we deal with China first because that's the originator. That's where it's coming from. But I actually do think we should send our special operations over to eliminate the cartels. We can't wait on Mexico anymore. We can't wait on any more Americans to die. We have to be aggressive on this and we treat them like the terrorists that they are. Those cartels, they're trafficking people, they're trafficking drugs, and they're killing Americans. And we have to put an end to it. So on the subject of China and Taiwan that you brought up a second ago, Vice President Harris was in Jakarta this week for a summit with Southeast Asian countries. President Biden has actually been criticized for being too direct on the subject of the U.S. with P President Haley defend Taiwan militarily if China invaded. We will defend Taiwan and we will let China know there will be hell to pay if they do anything that hurts the Taiwanese or any of our allies. You know, a strong America prevents wars, Jake, and that's what we have to do. You can't appease them. I was very disappointed that Biden sent Kamala over there for the ASEAN summit. This is an important summit. It's 10 countries um, that are really focused on Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. And China is going to go bully these countries who are desperately trying to fight back. The Philippines, Malaysia, and others who want them to stop by sending Kamala there and not really showing that you've got seriousness, seriousness on the fact that this Chinese aggression is hurting when we know most of the world trade goes through that, um, the, you know, that area of water. I mean, it's a, it's a mistake. And again, he says things, I appreciate it, words are fine, but actions matter. And if he would have gone and really made a strong point there, I think that would have been much more um, important than having Kamala go there and smile and take pictures.